In this video, we're going to cover the known history of Childeric I and how his death and burial marks the transition between the Roman Empire and a new world which would emerge in Western Europe in its absence. Stay tuned! In year 482, around a thousand people had gathered outside the city of Tournai to witness the burial of one of the first post-Roman kings in Western Europe and to take the opportunity to say their farewells, as well as be informed of who would become his successor. Some of them were the king's bannermen, others were elders who had traveled many miles from their villages to witness this political important event and some were just local farmers who had come to pay homage to the king who had given them 20 years of peace and prosperity in an otherwise chaotic age. The king's body was dressed in a Roman armor, together with an insignia ring saying Childeric Regis. In the tomb, 50 horses were buried with the king as a part of a burial ceremony, together with a range of artifacts, the most peculiar ones being a dozen of golden bees. But who was this king, and why was he buried in a Roman armor and with golden bees? To find out, we need to cover the history of the final decades of the Western Roman Empire. The 5th century was a time of change and chaos. The Western Roman Empire was on its last legs, plagued by civil wars, as well as growing pressure from the migrating peoples traveling across the borders in search of land and wealth. Many warlords were out to make their way in the ruins of the disintegrating empire, and the group most relevant for this video is a people called the Franks. The Franks are first mentioned in Roman sources in the 3rd century, being referred to as a Germanic tribe living east of the Rhine River, and the Franks wouldn't start to move into the Western Roman Empire until the early 5th century, when the Frankish king Clodio invaded the northern parts of the Roman province of Gaul. There he defeated the Roman commander Flavius Aefius, and also managed to take the cities of Camaracum and Tournai, the lands would remain in the hands of the Franks, and neither be retaken by the Romans, or conquered by another barbarian group. As the decades passed, Clodio died, and the rulership of the Franks was eventually passed on to his grandson Childeric, who would have a more cooperative relationship with the Roman Empire. Some scholars have speculated that Childeric in his youth had a military career in the Roman army before he ascended to the Frankish throne. He was a loyal ally to the last Roman emperors in the west, and would help them to defend the final remnants of the empire, with one of his most notable victories being against the Visigoths with the Roman general Agedius. As the empire finally collapsed in 476 AD, he found himself without his former ally, and would later pass away himself, five years later in 481, with his son Clovis conquering Gaul and expanding the Frankish kingdom to make it the dominant power in Western Europe following the fall of the Roman Empire. To the viewer, it will probably come as a surprise that we don't really know much more about the life of Childeric, other than the things just mentioned. So why make a video focusing on him in a collaboration on the Merovingians? The interest in Childeric doesn't necessarily lie in his conquests or his skills as a warrior, but rather in what he would come to symbolize. According to the scholar Peter S. Wells, the Childeric's death symbolized the transition between the end of the Roman Empire in the West, as well as the birth of the future medieval Europe that would emerge in its absence. Wells points out that the fact that Childeric is buried in the armor of a Roman officer, and with a signet ring with his name written in Latin, indicates that he identified with the Roman Empire, but he also points out that the fact that Childeric is buried together with 50 horses, at the same time indicates that he in many ways also were Germanic. Because of this, Wells argues that Childeric and his passing in a way is a symbol of the great changes taking place in Western Europe 
in the early post-Roman world. The idea of Rome was still strong, but new political ideals and structures were starting to appear. Commonly known as the first king of the Franks, and as a symbol of a changing world, the ties to Childeric would later be invoked by French monarchs like Charlemagne as well as Napoleon Bonaparte centuries later. In fact, when Napoleon was anointed Emperor of France in 1804, he chose to embroider dozens of bees on his imperial coat. In part, this was to distance himself from the Bourbon dynasty, but it was also to tie his kingship back to Childeric by using the symbol of the bees, which had been found in Childeric's grave. Through this, Napoleon wanted to convey that his coronation marked France entering into a new era, and this sort of symbolism really shows how Childeric, as well as the rise of the Merovingian dynasty, finally marked the end of Rome, as well as Europe entering into a new age. This video is part of a collaboration series on the Merovingian dynasty. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. Today, I hope you learned something new about the Merovingian dynasty, as well as about late Roman and early medieval history. Thanks for watching.